Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Minecraft Bedrock Server on a Linux. Uh, there are a couple of things, uh, prerequisites for this video. So the first thing you need to have is a Linux server that is running either Debian or Ubuntu. And in my case, I'm going to be doing this on a Debian box. And then the next thing is you need to have a user that has sudo privileges. So once you have these two things, the next thing you need to do is go ahead and connect your server. And once you're connected to your server, you're going to want to make sure that you have installed Unz zip and double get usually they come pre-installed in your machine but just make sure that you have them in my case i don't have them because i'm running the very basic trip down debian so once you have those two installed the next thing that you want to do is go to minecraft's website and from there you can download the latest version of the minecraft server to do that all you need to do is click on this little checkbox here and you can either click on this button but this will download it to your local machine and then from there you have to upload it to your server or the easiest way to do it is right click on the download button i'm going to pull this up a little bit so you can see but right click on this download button click on copy link and then from here once you copy this link you can uh, close this window but from here you can go ahead and run wget and then paste the link here and now you can go ahead and run wget and that will download the latest version of the server on your machine now from there you're going to want to go ahead and unzip this so so what I will do is unzip it in my home directory. Uh, this is where my server is going to be installed in my home Debian. But if you want, you can do that in any other directory. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I'm going to go ahead and run unzip followed by the name of the file that I just downloaded. And then I'm going to say dash D and I'll install everything in directory called bedrock server. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on enter and that will unzip that file and put all of the contents into that bedrock server directory. I'm going to go ahead and list this. You can see this directory got created. Then I'm going to go ahead and go into that directory. Now, once you're in this directory, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the server properties file. And this is the file where you can set up all the settings for your server. So I'm going to go ahead and open this file. And now here, for example, you can give your server a name. I'm going to call this big tutelage server. And then here you can change your game mode, I'll either force the game mode or no. I can pick a difficulty level. I'm not going to go through all of this since these are kind of like a personal preferences. You can choose what uh, you want to do. But the main thing that I'm going to go here and do is change this online mode from true to false. And that will allow me to just connect to my server without authenticating. Otherwise, I'm going to need to use my Xbox Live account, which I don't want to do that. But basically, I'm going to change this to false. That way, anybody that's on my local network will be able to connect on the server. Now, if you're going to be exposing this server to the internet, then you want this to stay untrue. That way, when servers available on the internet, people will have to use their Xbox Live account in order to connect your server. But since this is only going to be on my local network, so people that are on my Wi-Fi are the only people that will be able to connect to the server, I will change this to false. So once I change this, you can go ahead and uh, save this file and exit it. And then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and start your server and all you have to do to start a server is run the following command so once you run this command your server will start and when you see this screen here you should be ready to connect to the server from your mobile device so what you're going to want to do is go to your mobile device and open your minecraft pocket edition app and once you have the app open you can go ahead and click on that play button and then assuming that the device that you're running pocket edition on is on your local network you should see here in the friends tab the name of the server that you just created once you see that server there you can go ahead and tap on it and that will connect you to the server as you can see here you have player angel just connected to the server and on my device i got into the world and there you go i'm into my own minecraft server that is running on my network. Now, one thing with this setup, the way we have it right now, is if you go ahead and disconnect from this, like let's say I go ahead and close this window, what's gonna happen is my Minecraft session is going to die. And as you can see, um, my Minecraft session got disconnected. So what I'm gonna show you next is how to make it so that session stays even if you get disconnected from the server or you close your SSH session. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna connect back to the server. 
And once I'm back into the server, there are like a couple ways to do that. So the first way I'm gonna show you is um, I'm gonna use a tool called Screen. You may have it pre-installed on your machine if you're using Ubuntu, but if you're on Debian like me, you're most likely gonna have to go ahead and install that. And to install it, all you have to do is run sudo apt install screen and that will install this screen tool. And with this tool, you'll be able to uh, start a virtual session in which you can start your uh, Minecraft server. And that way you can detach from that session. And even if you close your SSH connection or you close your terminal window, the server will be running into that screen session. So to do that, to start a screen session, what you wanna do is go ahead and go into uh, my Minecraft server installation directory bedrock server and then from there to start a screen session all i have to do is run screen dash uppercase s and you can name your session you can leave it blank but it's nice to name it so you can know what that session is so i'm just going to call it minecraft and that will start a new session and in this session then you can go ahead and start your Minecraft server. So again, we're gonna run that initial command that we run to start the server and that will start the server, but that server will be running now into the screen session. And to exit out of this session, all you have to do is on your keyboard, click on control A and then go ahead and click the letter D and that will detach you from that session. So as you can see here, it tells you detach from session 835 Minecraft. So now if I go ahead and list my screen sessions, so if I say screen dash LS and you can see that I have one session, uh, it's called Minecraft session ID 835 that's up and running. So now if I go back to my mobile device and go to my Minecraft app and go ahead, click on play, you can see now again, I have my server running and I can connect to that server and I have this session running, but now I can go ahead actually and close my terminal window and my session will stay live. So there it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and terminate this. Now I'm no longer connected to the session. I have this screen session running virtually as my Debian user and I'm still connected to my Minecraft server from my mobile device, as you can see, and I can go ahead and play uh, without having to keep this SSH connection up and running. Now, there's one downside with doing it this way is that if something happens and this session crashes or if your server reboots, this session will get disconnected. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go ahead, this is a virtual machine that I'm running on the QMU, so I'm gonna go ahead into my QMU box as you can see, this is my Minecraft Bedrock server. I'm gonna go ahead and restart that server. And what that will do is that will kill my session. As you can see, there you go. My server, I got disconnected from my server. And once the server reboots, which I think it already did, that was quick. Oh, it's rebooting right now. There we go, I'm at my login screen. So my server just rebooted. So now I can go ahead and connect back to that server. Go ahead, clean my screen here. And if I do screen-ls, you can see that I have no running screen sessions. And if I go back to my device, as you can see, uh, my server is not running. That's because my server rebooted and the server did not automatically start. And because of that reason, I'm not really a big fan of using the screen. Uh, what I like to use is a supervisor. Now the supervisor is another tool that you can use on pretty much any Linux distribution. And with supervisor, we can monitor that process. That supervisor can monitor our Minecraft server process and it can make sure that that server always runs. Like even if something happens and it crashes, it will attempt to restart it. Or if your server reboots, it will automatically start uh, your Minecraft server process. So to get supervisor installed in your machine, all you have to do is run sudo apt install supervisor. And once you have supervisor installed in your server, the next thing you want to do is you're going to go ahead and create a configuration file that will give it some instructions on how to start and stop your server. So to do that, we're going to run the following command. So we're going to do sudo nano etsy supervisor conf d is where supervisor keeps its configuration files. And we're going to create a, a new configuration file. I'm going to call it Minecraft Bedrock. And that file has to be with conf extension. There you 
go. Now, once you have the file open, I'm gonna go ahead and paste the following configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post this under the video. That way you don't have to type all of it. And basically what we're doing in this config here is we're giving it the command. So this is uh, the same command, the bedrock server command that we are running when we start the server manually. And then here we are setting this variable for the LD library path. If you remember in the initial command, we run dot since we are running it from um, this bedrock server directory. In this case, we're giving full path to the bedrock server directory. And um, here we're telling it what user to run it. In my case, it's Debian. Again, you should adjust that based on whatever user you have and you want your server to run as. And here I'm setting it so it out of start. So if my server reboots, my supervisor will out of start my Debian server. Um, if for some reason the application crashes and the supervisor detects that the Minecraft server is not running, it will auto restart it. Here I'm redirecting my standard error logs into my regular log file. That way I only have one log file, but if you want, you can give it a path to an error file. That way uh, your logs will be split. Just basically, now this was an overview of uh, what's in this configuration. Now, once you have this configuration file all created, you can go ahead and close it, make sure that you save the changes. And then the next thing you wanna do is you can run a supervisor reload. That way it will pick that new configuration file. So we can do sudo supervisor ctl reload. And that will read that configuration file that we just set up and to load it into the supervisor. And now if I run the same command, but instead of reload, I run status. This will show me that we have one job that's called Minecraft Bedrock that is running, and which means that my server is actually up and running. And if you want to confirm, you can go ahead and check in that log file that we set. So in that log file, you should see the same information that we're seeing when we start the server manually. So if I say cat var log, and I think we called it Minecraft, yeah, Minecraft Bedrock Outlog. And as you can see, this looks exactly the same like was showing it when we start the server manually or via screen. Now, once we have that started, again, you can go back to your mobile device and you can see that the server just showed up here. So you can go ahead and connect to it and you can go ahead and play your game. Now, the nice thing about this is that even if our server reboots, I'm gonna go back to my QMU box here and um, reboot my server again. So as you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and I will do force reset. So that will reboot my server and it will kick me out of the app. There you go. But the nice thing about this is that when I go back here now and connect to the server, and if I go ahead and run sudo supervisor ctl status, you can see that my Minecraft bedrock job is running, which means that my server now automatically started. So if I go ahead here and click on my app, it will automatically reconnect me to my server. So you will get some outage when your server reboots, but once your server comes up, it will automatically start it for you. So there you go. I'm gonna go ahead here and I can go ahead, connect to the server and I can just play the game. So that was it for today. I hope this video was useful for you. If you liked it, please click on the like button. If you have any questions, don't be shy and make sure you post it in a comment section under the video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for my channel.